I'm Frank So, Executive Vice President of E1 Mali Energy Canada. Thank you so much for your uh, time, uh, Frank, today. Very excited to be talking about Canadian supply chains in the context of our competitiveness and our um, uh, opportunity to attract more foreign investment. First question, maybe an obvi obvious one, how has the global COVID-19 pandemic impacted uh, our supply chains and why has it caused us to rethink how they operate? Well, thank you for having me. I believe um, COVID-19 really exposed some weaknesses to our supply chain. COVID sp started to spread in January of 2020 and by the end of January, China and a number of Southeast Asian countries went into a full lockdown, which created a worldwide shortage of basically everything that was manufactured. And even through Christmas, um, online shoppers will go on sites and they will see a note saying that uh, due to COVID-19, the supply of goods may be impacted. On top of that, there were stories last summer from the President of the United States and his America First mentality refusing the export of goods to support Canada in the form of PPE. Even though at the end there were no restrictions on exports from the U.S., COVID is a real wake-up call to rethink globalization and mitigate our import reliance. We are a manufacturer, and over the last year, we certainly have seen heightened interest from the U.S., different states to expand our manufacturing to North America and reduce the reliance on Asian countries. However, this is great for us, but if you peel back the supply chain one more level, our raw materials are still coming from Asia. So I believe we need to do more in the processing and refining of natural resources to create raw materials for manufacturing. If we can do this, then we have the true control and leverage over the entire supply chain. So from a supply chain perspective, what do international companies like E1 Mali Energy look for when considering investing in a foreign country? We are a manufacturer of lithium ion cells currently in Taiwan with R&D in Canada. We are actually asking this exact same question as we're looking at expanding our manufacturing outside of Taiwan. There are a number of factors for consideration. Number one, proximity to market. Our major customers in North America are in the U.S. Manufacturing closer to the market means quicker delivery, which means faster conversion of product to cash. And that is really important in, in any business. Currently, with manufacturing in Taiwan, it takes roughly three to four weeks for the goods to come by ocean to land on the West Coast. For customers who have net 30 terms, basically that means that their invoices are due before they even receive the goods, which really puts a strain on their cash flow. On the flip side, that puts pressure on us to extend that the um, payment terms in order to help support our small and medium enterprise customers. Number two, we do believe that Made in Canada is a valued brand. We're proud to put Made in Canada on our product. It means supporting the local economy and gives a sense of quality and workmanship. These are um, very attractive attributes to our customers in Canada and the U.S. Finally, there's the trade benefits. Manufacturing Canada have benefits from the free trade agreement with the U.S. and Mexico. So right now, goods that are manufactured in Asia, when it comes over, there's taxes in both Canada and the U.S., where having that manufacturing in Canada will alleviate that, that cost. The same can be said for the European market and the manufacturing in the EU. There is an equal amount of benefit to expanding manufacturing there. So what is the difference? It really comes down to the government support to tip that interest to bring into Canada versus other um, parts of the world. You've already shared some of the benefits, but perhaps there are more that Canada offers international investors from a supply chain perspective in perhaps in the North American context. Uh, and what competitive advantages do we have compared to other jurisdictions? I believe Canada has a lot to offer in terms of competitiveness. For our industry, which relies on advanced, highly automated, high volume manufacturing, we benefit from well-educated workforce of operators, technicians, and professionals. Keep in mind that high graduation is not a requisite to work in manufacturing in developing countries. For high-tech work, the focus is on equipment upkeep and not just throwing people to complete the task, and this is our strength. I believe there's a strong advantage for high-tech manufacturing in Canada. As a country, we are fortunate to have an abundance of renewable energy needed for manufacturing. We have an abundance of natural resources that allows us to develop the vertical supply chain. We have free trade with the U.S., which gives us an import um, 
advantage over other countries. So how do you assess the availability of a supply chain focused talent in Canada and the quality of the innovation uh, ecosystem focused on supply chains? This is where we can really improve. Canada is strong at research and development innovations, but not in the conversion of new technology to mass production. Many companies are based in Canada to develop products that then turn to Asia for volume supply. From our experience, experienced industrial engineers or manufacturing engineers are hard to find in the West Coast. Not all products can be manufactured profitably in Canada, and that's a fact as we do have a higher cost and standard of living. However, companies that can leverage our strength, our resources, and people can make this work. What can key stakeholders from government to industry or others do to strengthen Canadian supply chains beyond what you've already shared with us? To strengthen Canadian supply chain, it really comes down to support from all three levels of government, federal, provincial, and municipal. I see the federal government taking the lead in this area, but there should be a more concerted effort to have all three levels of government working together. I find that the three levels of government are working too much on their own and not collaboratively to create solutions for potential investors. In our industry, for example, support is not only in the attraction of, say, battery manufacturers, but the work at building up the raw material supply channel, funding in material processing, and bringing innovations to market. There are a lot of good ideas across the country, and the, and the industry really needs a good push to turn innovations into products.